So last but not least, uh, we have the presentation from Arne Höck. Arne Höck is from Enerin. He's the CEO of uh, this company. Um, Arne has a master in, business, uh, in process and mechanical engineering from DTU in Norway. He has 27 years of experience in clean tech, R&D, especially precision agriculture, micro combined heat and power, hydrogen electrolyzers, and industrial heat pumps, especially using water or helium as refrigerant, and this since 2006. So he is the CEO, as mentioned, and also co-founder of Enerin, and uh, previously he was the CEO and founder of Single Face Power, and previously also a partner of Adigo Mechatronics. So please, Arne, uh, we are looking forward to your presentation on the Sterling Cycle Steam Generating Heat Pump. The floor is yours. Thank you. Just to uh, highlight one extra point with uh, heat pumps compared to boilers, and that is that uh, as we recycle the waste heat, the strain on the energy system is reduced, and that is also very valuable to uh, industrial plants when you install the heat pump. So, our Hög Temp heat pump, Hög Temp means high temperature in Norwegian. Um, we use the Stirling cycle. It's, an, it's a cycle that uses a more or less an ideal gas. So we use uh, helium so far. We could also be using nitrogen or hydrogen. Um, it's one of the ideal cycles uh, compared to Carnot cycle. Uh, but in reality, it's uh, especially good at uh, high temperature lifts. So more than 100 degrees, maybe 120 degrees. Uh, temperature lifts between source and sink, then the Stirling cycle will typically be the, um, the most efficient cycle. So we can generate steam or hot water, even let's say thermal oil uh, from any heat source. So it could be a minus 10 degree air source or, uh, or a cooling system. And uh, since this is an ideal gas in the heat pump and we don't depend on boiling and condensation, um, the heat pump is not sensitive to temperature variations. So if the heat source varies for like maybe 10, 50 degrees, then uh, the heat pump will still work and still be able to deliver the, uh, the steam that is required. And we can also do different glides on cold and hot side if, uh, if that is desired. So it's simple integration, just add uh, power and the steam line. And, uh, and program it more or less like an electric boiler. So we believe the Hög Temp is best for the high temperature lifts. So we have the temperature lift here on the, on the left axis. So if the temperature difference is uh, above 80 degree or up to 100 degree, it will most likely have a higher COP than other types of heat pumps. Also, it's uh, able to deliver up to 200 degree at, uh, at this point. So that's uh, sometimes uh, higher than, than most competing heat pumps. So I think also it's the, it's the best solution if the conditions vary quite a lot. So simple integration, as I said, future proof. So um, let's say a plant has uh, 180 degree um, hot water circuit or a 10 bar steam line and they are thinking about reducing the temperature or, or the steam pressure in the future. Well, no problem for this heat pump because the heat pump will just adapt to the new conditions and have a higher COP in the future. Also the same on the cold side, if it's uh, installed using, uh, let's say, a waste heat source, uh, it's possible to uh, start delivering cooling in a cooling circuit in the future if that's desirable. So no need to, to do all the integration at the first step. It's just install the heat pump and then do optimization later. So I'm going to introduce uh, three sites that we are uh, installing. The first one was uh, last year, August uh, of last year. So this is a biogas plant. You can see anaerobic digesters on the, uh, on the right here. 
and they produce methane and CO2 and some H2S. Those are washed away with an amine process here in the middle. So uh, that's the, let's say, CO2 capture system. And here we have the heat pump delivering steam to the CO2 capture and also recycling the heat from the cooling system. So as you can see, it's possible to install in the brownfield installation. Uh, just add the electric cable here on the right and, uh, and the steam line here. So this is close up, um, fairly compact unit. And so it kind of a compressor with integrated heat exchangers and with the water flanges on the left here. Uh, here with installation, you can also see the steam generator on the right. So we don't need a steam generator. That's all, only if the customer wants the steam. So it's possible to go directly with the hot water. Process is fairly simple. We uh, use whatever uh, temperature is in the waste heat circuit. So now in the winter, it's maybe uh, 15 to 20 degrees. Uh, in the summer, it will probably be closer to 40 degrees Celsius. And we can deliver, well, the customer wants two bar steam, but we can generate up to 13 bar steam, increasing the temperature of this hot water circuit up to 200 degrees. So we've done that. So here we have measurements uh, from 140 degree all the way up to 200 degree with a source of 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. And here, these measurements were do, done at 50% uh, of the capacity. So we are planning to publish a new map for this uh, at full power uh, sometime this summer. In terms of uh, Carnot efficiency, uh, we see that it's best for the high temperature lift. So a temperature rate zero of 1.3, that could be approximately 100 degree of uh, temperature lift and above, we are uh, seeing 50% to 60% or even higher at, uh, as uh, Carnot efficiency. While at these low temperatures here, other heat pumps will probably have higher COPs. Second installation, so this is uh, this summer, GE Healthcare, that's a 800 kilowatts uh, steam generating heat pump will look kind of similar, almost identical process uh, system and components as we have al already tested for uh, close to uh, 3000 hours, uh, slightly higher capacity. So from 400 to 800 kilowatts, and they will use uh, two bar steam at this belt, very stable conditions and everything. Uh, almost identical setup. Uh, but uh, the heat source is even lower in temperature. So third installation is at uh, Pelagia Mole. So that's a seafood uh, plant. Uh, Pelagia, they deal in uh, herring and mackerel. And, uh, and this is a plant doing um, uh, animal feed, uh, feedstock uh, from waste products from uh, or by byproducts from uh, from the the food. So 1.6 megawatt steam, eight, up to eight bar G, also to be installed uh, this summer. So what's special about this uh, this plant is that uh, the energy demand varies quite a lot. Every time there's a big catch of fish and they have lots of feedstock and, and everything is running full throttle, but then uh, there is no catch and, uh, and then nothing to process at this plant. So we also see here on the right, we see a typical ramp with uh, all the different uh, systems starting and, uh, and stopping and going up and down. So, um, so the conditions vary quite a lot also in both in uh, waste heat, temperature, availability and, uh, and steam pressure. So uh, what we do then in such cases, we do a dynamic pinch analysis uh, to see what we, uh, what we can do and what we should do. And we also develop a virtual plant or a digital twin of the plant so that we can see how the, the demand and the energy result from the heat pump will be. 
So in this case, also quite similar process equipment to the pr two previous ones. Um, but uh, we will then install two modules of 800 kilowatts each in this plant. And the steam will be generated in one steam generator here in the middle. The system is different uh, because here there is an uh, ANEO heat pump. So the first uh, stage with an, uh, with an ammonia heat pump. So uh, that one will use the, um, the highest temperature waste heat. And then the lowest temperature waste heat will go to our heat pump. And then we will discharge the rest of the heat to, uh, to the sea. And then uh, we'll typically uh, be able to uh, supply five bar to eight bar steam here. And uh, the COP will typically be around 1.8, but depending on the temperatures, we can vary between 1.5 and 2.5. So steam, uh, the heat source will definitely be the most important there. This is also a case where we'll have a quite high glide on the heat source. So this heat pump can do low glide, high glide on both sides independently. So lastly, I'll also introduce the SUS heat project. Um, and uh, here we will supply one heat pump to the lab at uh, KTH in Stockholm, where we will map the performance up all the way up to 250 degree. So the heat pump in the middle here, we have a pressurized uh, circuit on the whole side where we can then heat up to um, 250 degrees. Um, maybe we will go even a little bit higher than that. And on the source, we can uh, we can have up to, I think, uh, 150 as an extreme heat source temperature, but uh, typically up to 100, 130 degree. And uh, the aim is to publish a complete performance map with COP for this heat pump. So lots of partners here. Also mentioned that uh, all our R&D work has been funded by the European Union, Innovation Norway, Research Council of Norway, and NOVA, and uh, a lot of other bodies. So um, basically, we we have the technology now to decarbonize industry up to uh, 200 degrees. It's uh, not, as you know, the only technology out there, but it's especially valuable for high temperature lift, variable conditions. And, uh, and also potentially up to 250 degrees in the future. So thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Arne, for presenting uh, the Sterling cycle heat pump, the Hook temp heat pump.